Hello, DRC members. I'm Ulrike Zeshan. I'm uh, happy to share with you some work on serious games. I facilitate the serious games group in the GRC and uh, we meet every two weeks to uh, introduce a different aspect of uh, serious games or a different example of a serious game. And uh, some of you have been joining these sessions. And for those of you who have not yet heard of serious games, I'm uh, glad to uh, introduce you to uh, the topic. So a serious game is essentially what it says on the tin. It's a game that is used for aims beyond mere entertainment. For example, learning awareness or collaboration. And here we'll talk in particular about collaborating better using serious games. Here you can pause the video and take a look at all the features of serious games on this slide. Here you can see some of the effects that serious games have. Uh, so like I said, the game is engaging, so people tend to pay better attention. It's also more memorable because whenever you experience something in a more uh, holistic way that uh, involves the emotions as well, this uh, helps you remember better. Uh, I already talked about the non-threatening nature of games, so where uh, people are also able to uh, do and say things that uh, they wouldn't probably do or say if they were sitting in a formal meeting. Typically games are multi-sensory, that means they are not only about uh, talking but also about uh, touching things, moving around uh, and uh, uh, seeing various visual environments etc. And so therefore games are holistic because all kinds of human capacities are involved and they are more inclusive because they uh, enable people to uh, interact in a way that is different and also the rules of the game often will uh, purposefully allow each and every person to participate. Here you can see a list of all the serious game sessions that we've done so far in the GRC. It's uh, evident from the list what kind of uh, topics and themes can be covered in serious games and uh, a lot of regenerative projects can be supported by games. Uh, if you pause the video again, you can uh, take a minute to read through the different topics. I will now talk you through an example of gamifying collaboration so that uh, you can imagine a bit better how serious games can be used in a real life situation. The example is about work with the Ethical Small Traders Association, which is an association of small business owners in Lancaster in the UK. And all members subscribe to uh, uh, aiming for multiple bottom lines, so not only financial viability and profit, but also environmental aims, social aims, and uh, personal development and learning. The Ethical Small Traders Association has a framework of over 300 individual aims in 20 sectors, and the aims are intended to uh, cover all kinds of aspects that we need for a more livable and regenerative future. Our aim was to gamify the collaboration between ESTA members so that it's not only more enjoyable and engaging for members to collaborate, but also more effective and uh, uh, people can uh, move through the different phases of getting to know each other and starting collaborations in their actual setting. So therefore, the first aim was to familiarize members better with uh, the 300 plus aims that constitute the framework of ESTA. And uh, we did this by converting the aims into a visual format and into cards that you can use for playing a card game. You can see some of these cards here. And uh, the, our first step was to uh, test use of these cards with uh, an initial game. And we did this uh, several times with different uh, groups of ESTA members. Here is an example card. So you can see that the sector is transport and uh, the individual aim is reclaiming redundant parking spaces. There are the various uh, uh, 
uh, symbols and numberings on the card and each sector has a different color. So in the first phase of gamification, we take a subset of uh, these cards and uh, distributing eight cards per player, we start uh, playing them out uh, onto uh, the table in the middle. And the uh, basic rule is that uh, you need to match a card with another card from a different sector, so therefore a different color, and explain how these two individual aims could be linked. So that uh, you then get a visual display of different clusters of uh, individual actions that have a logical link. In the picture, we had uh, just started the game, and you could see different clusters forming with cards uh, in different colors. The aim of this first step is to familiarize members with these 300 plus games. So instead of giving people a really long, huge list of uh, 300 games that is very unwielding and nobody can uh, really remember and engage with uh, a simple list, these card games, if you play them several times, allow you to uh, not only see these uh, different aims at the different sectors, but also think about them because you need to make links. And having done this, um, in the second step, we can then find groups of people with shared interest in sectors and goals. Uh, at the moment, all these uh, steps are a prototype, and uh, we have uh, tried some of them, but uh, uh, the uh, more extensive use of games in the ESTA network by playing with lots of members is something we are currently doing. We are planning a workshop with uh, further members soon where we uh, bring these games to more of the members. In the second step, we use a different kind of card, which is a sector card. So here you can see an example sector aid communication infrastructure, and there's a short explanation so communication infrastructure means the medium that uh, carries the message and uh, it's uh, uh, at the level of sectors rather than individual goals that uh, the second game is played and hence it has 20 cards, one for each of the 20 sectors. The game works by uh, walking around the circular parkour using a dice and uh, each of the fields has a sector card. There are also wildcard fields so that you can uh, pull in individual other sectors from among the 20 that uh, you prefer to talk about. Once you land on a card, then everybody places tokens. You can see tokens in different colors here. So you will be the owner of uh, several tokens in your color and you need to choose your preference. So the outer uh, placing your token on the outer ring means that uh, you are interested in the sector as a matter of uh, priority, but you're not actually working in this field. If your token is placed on the inner uh, side, then this means you're already working in this sector. So by doing this, we can see that uh, uh, the members who are playing this game are forming uh, groups where several members are interested or already working in a sector and these are then potential uh, topics for collaborating. Both games could also be played online. And here you can see an example. This is actually a game that we were playing in GRC and uh, everybody has uh, different tokens in their color and uh, instead of the uh, game board in the real world you place your tokens uh, on the screen. This also works, although of course meeting face to face is uh, always nicer. In our thinking, there would then be a further steps for groups to plan concrete projects for local collaborations within the ESTA network. We've not yet uh, done this, but uh, what uh, we know is that there are already lots of gamified uh, tools and processes that uh, could be used at this stage. So if we get to the stage where members of ESTA want to collaborate on something specific, maybe on local energy or on uh, uh, management of uh, traffic or green spaces or on housing, 
then there are lots of gamified tools already available. Yeah, I've listed some examples, and we've also played some examples in the GRC networks that uh, uh, are part of these categories. You can have brainstorming games, uh, mapping games, scenario planning games, simulations, role-playing games, games for project management phases. All this uh, already exists um, in various ways. And uh, from my experience, um, I find that it is actually quite easy to invent and use bespoke games that exactly fit the purpose of a project and uh, of uh, each of the development steps that you want to go through. I now come to the point where I see a gap in what is available already in the uh, serious games community. And the gap is where we move from planning and simulation to real world action and uh, where we want to gamify some process that is happening in the real world. So suppose that ESTA members have, uh, by playing with the cards in step one and step two, have decided what they want to work on. They have also formed a group uh, and decided who will do this work. And uh, they have used some of the other generally available games and tools to uh, decide how to work. And all this has been at the level of planning and simulation. Now, the big question is how we could have a process that runs along our real world action. So suppose if we want to uh, do something with uh, available green spaces, we uh, go out and uh, different ESTA members uh, initiate some action in uh, within the green space. How would a game run alongside this real world action and uh, keep it uh, fun and engaging and pe people pe keep uh, people motivated? That is very important because often when you uh, have when you are done with all your brainstorming, planning, and so on, everybody is feeling excited. But once it gets to the nitty-gritty of uh, acting in the real world, it's very easy to lose momentum. So in my opinion, games could uh, help to sustain the momentum and keep things uh, uh, fun, engaging, and lively for people who are doing this work. But I don't see uh, many uh, ideas for games that would work in this way. I'm uh, looking for. Uh, some solution and uh, this is something I would like to work in uh, with priority in the future. If we have succeeded in uh, doing some real world action, then the uh, final step is to share our story of what the, our group has worked on with a wider audience. And here again, the question is how to gamify this. To disseminate what you've done in some real-life project, you could uh, do uh, one of two broad uh, approaches. One is to uh, write a project report or academic paper or a detailed summary which has all the um, details and uh, uh, steps and uh, information on paper. And uh, people should read this if they are interested in your work. Um, however, the problem is that this is very dry and if these are academic papers, they are also hard to read and the audience for this is uh, uh, not easy to broaden out to more people. An alternative is to uh, create uh, uh, exhibitions or video documentaries, uh, films. These can be very powerful and engaging, but after viewing them, uh, you don't get all the details, so it's uh, not so easy to learn from the initiative that you are watching in a documentary film when uh, you don't get all the details. And uh, so both of the approaches have uh, a problem, and uh, gamifying uh, the dissemination is uh, a possible solution. So here you can see a game board where the aim is to uh, disseminate uh, your initiative interactively. A group would play this uh, game, walk around the parkour, and wherever there's a QR code, you will uh, uh, scan the QR code and get a uh, uh, link to a file, which could be a video file or an Excel file, a PowerPoint uh, slide presentation, and the group together will view each file and discuss. This is an example of what this looks like. Again, this has been a GRC session where we've tried out this game, and uh, you can see how uh, 
the middle of the game board gets populated with uh, placeholder cards. So each of these uh, cards are a placeholder for the multimedia file that we saw when scanning the QR code. Uh, for example, you scan a QR code and you get a, a diagram of uh, the water management system under discussion with the, you know, the different pipes and water points drawn on or a picture, a photo of the uh, grey water management system. In this case, the topic was uh, water management systems in the Shika Eco Learning Village in India. This is uh, the eco village I'm associated with. And uh, so we uh, played this and uh, uh, discussed the uh, different multimedia materials. And there were also other uh, cards which are called Link, SWOT, and Joker to discuss this further. So, how this is different from other dissemination is that uh, uh, number one, uh, there's multimedia material with lots of detail. Uh, but you're not just reading this or viewing this, you are discussing it in a group because uh, uh, each prompt uh, that comes up needs to be discussed by the group. So it's an interactive way and it's like a quest where slowly the whole project is revealed by uh, going from one uh, file to another and trying to understand uh, what the uh, initiative is about.